Hi, I'm Kyle, and today I will take you on a retro hammer journey to the days when Eldar had both Dreadnoughts and Wraith Lords. Eldar Wraith constructs nowadays are of course the beloved and overpowered monsters for the Eldar army. Huge and tough suites of armor animated by a soul of a dead Eldar warrior. But 25 years ago things were a bit more complicated. First of all, the thing you know today as a Wraith Lord was actually a Dreadnought, piloted, believe it or not, by a living and kicking Eldar. As the Dreadnought suits are puppets of sorts, they were even popular with Harlequins, and you could even have a Psyker inside for some mecha warlock action. Look at these pages of the fabled Red Compendium. They list all the gear you can attach to practically any infantry model to turn it into a Japanese mecha. But then there came something new. The concept of Eldar Infinity Circuit. This was a possible upgrade to a Dreadnought, replacing the cockpit with a container for a soul of a dead Eldar. It gave the model some boost in stats, but there was a chance the spirit will succumb to some existential problem. To distinguish these so-called spirit warriors from normal dreadnoughts, they were given different heads you can see here. Apart from these, these were exactly the same models. Remember the ghost pilot was an upgrade? So the thing to the right was meant to be a dreadnought and the model to the left a wraith lord. As we are already looking at old Eldar Dreadnoughts, I will take this opportunity to point some interesting evolution that happened to them. First of all, notice the bases. The original model was sold with a square 4cm base. This was later replaced with a round base of also around 4cm, this time in diameter, and currently this was upped to the large 2.5 inch base. This is around 6.5 centimeters. The bases you see on these models are a bit anachronistic. They should all be mounted on the square bases for their era. I replaced the bases of two of them with the round ones around the year 2000 to play better with the third edition of Warhammer 40k rules. It is noteworthy that Games Workshop is very slack regarding model bases and there are no strict rules regarding them, which causes some confusion. They generally say that you should use the base provided with the model. Well, I have some Terminators I bought when they were on the tiny round bases. These Wraith Lords came with square bases. Jet bikes came originally with octagonal bases, which is plain weird by today's standards. Nowadays you can buy fantasy models with either square or round bases dependent solely on whether the particular box you pick from the shelf was repackaged when Age of Sigmar dropped. Another thing I want to point out are guns. There was an interesting evolution of Eldar equipment from being just a version of standard imperial designs to something completely alien. The Spirit Warrior has a last gun that looks almost totally like the Imperial one. This Dreadnought's missile launcher is a different thing to the Imperial shark-like design of the time, but still looks pretty Earthling compared to the newer designs. And this Dreadnought already has a third edition Star Cannon, which started as a standard plasma gun to tell you the truth, I like both designs of Eldar guns. The first edition ones have their charm, and the later ones have a very nice, sleek and alien design that suits just Goodwin's Eldar much better. And the final thing I want to point out today are arms. The original Dreadnought and Wraith Lord were designed like Imperial Dreadnoughts and you had to pick whether you wanted a close combat arm or a shooty one. Then came basically a conversion kit with a small part allowing you to put the gun above the shoulder. This looks like a homemade conversion, but it is totally official. Now the second edition model already has his antenna tweaked to have a dedicated gun slot. 
Of course, current Wraith Lords have even more arms than these, which makes them look more like Tyranid Warriors or some Demon Engine. I prefer the overall look of the old models as they look tougher. Remember the Wraith Lord is super tough rules wise, to the point they were considered overpowered in many editions, as bolters and chain fists couldn't hurt them. Fluffwise this was also right as it came from the fact they were not put together from some sheets of metal, but grown out of solid wraith bone, one of the toughest substances in the known universe. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this retro hammer trip to the first editions of Eldar Wraith Lords. Thank you for watching and have fun with your hobby.